Well, come back now. South Africa became the first African country to go on lockdown with the intentions to curb the spread of the global pandemic that is coronavirus. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa early this week announced that South Africa will be on lockdown for 21 days. South Africa have now joined India, United Kingdom, Australia and Italy to close her borders. SABC's regional news editor in the Western Cape, that is Kenneth Makatiz, now joins us via Skype from Cape Town, South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us, Kenneth. Good morning, how are you? Very, very well. Uh, Kenneth, let's get into it. Uh, the lockdown became a reality at midnight uh, yesterday. Talk to us about the mood of the people of South Africa. You know, um, the president addressed the nation twice in the past two weeks, and I think after the first address, and I saw it in, even in my own office, people, there was a lot of anxiety, and people were quite insecure and worried. And as the, the you know, the day's progress and ministers briefed um, the South African population daily, literally daily, they have briefing sessions, I think people, you know, the information is getting out and people start to understand what is happening. I, for example, was at the funeral in Immaculate, which is about 600 kilometers from Cape Town this past weekend. And I was totally impressed with the way uh, people behaved, the way that they interacted, the way they greeted me. And I, I thought that the church in that instance played a very important role, even during the service of the priests told people, you know, what to do and what not to do. So I think there's, there's quite an awareness of what is happening. Of course, I mean, it's, it's disrupting people's way of life. It's limiting the movement of people. And it's causing a lot of, I assume, inconvenience. But my interaction with people is that they do understand. They understand that it's necessary to do it. But also remember, we are a population of, what, 55 million people in this country, and maybe not every single one of them are doing what they're supposed to do. I saw overnight there was a countdown party somewhere in this country, which, you know, which is, I think, quite irresponsible. So yeah. you've got that kind of, of uh, uh, reaction. But my, my impression this morning, and I was also getting uh, the reports or listening to the report from our reporters in the, across the country, is that generally people are adhering to this. Uh, I, I mean, it's still early days, but Johannesburg is quiet. Cape Town is very quiet. I live in the, the city centre. It's very quiet. I've only seen one car so far. Mm. The Seapoint Beach front where my office is is normally quite a hive of activity this time of the morning. No one is to be seen there. Yeah. So, yes, I think it's, it's most probably kind of a mixed uh, response. But generally, I think uh, people are taking it in and accept that we all have a role to play. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about uh, the day w before the lockdown, which is yesterday. Uh, what was the mood of the people like? Was it, did you see a lot of panic buying? Unfortunately, yes. Maybe not, not so bad as it was a few days ago because the president also, uh, in his uh, address on Monday, oh, sorry, Monday night, he actually told people, you look, there's enough food in this country. You don't have to go and stockpile. Yesterday, the premier of the Western Cape uh, had a news conference also in the afternoon and emphasized the same. But you still see long queues at some places, also out of every single shop. I was quite surprised. I mean, uh, when people became aware that for the this next three weeks, they were obviously quite a, a panic buy, I think, then. All the bottle stores, even yesterday morning, quite early when I drove to work, there was a long queue outside a bottle store. So uh, it has happened, as it is not all over, but, but people are concerned and are buying. But I think from the government side, they, they emphasize they, there is no need to stop buying and there are enough food for everyone in this country. Correct. And, and, and the supermarkets themselves, uh, were they demarcated as uh, queuing line in, in the lines as spots uh, to keep that distance between uh, customers that were in the lines? No, no, uh, not at all. Generally not. Um, I know that one of the um, chains that's also got a pharmacy inside, they started implementing it yesterday. In mm. fact, 
they locked the doors and people had to queue outside and they had to be a two meter, one between one and two meter between the people. So the queue was quite long. But that's the only shop that I'm aware of. Other than that, people were actually standing very close to each other and didn't observe. Now, I must also add, yesterday I went with one of our cameramen to go and interview someone, and we, were, we put on our mask, and we were, uh, I then posted the picture on my Facebook, for example, and I was standing next to him, and you know so many people commented on it and sent me messages to say I didn't keep the social distance, and I, I, I should, and unfortunately I didn't when I took the picture. So uh, that's maybe something that we need to address and that we are not always aware of. Okay. Now, we know that uh, there is a lot of hoaxes and uh, fake news around the novel coronavirus. And fake news is spreading on social media. And South Africa, in, uh, in fact, South Africa have uh, criminalized the spread of uh, fake news. Uh, give us a picture of how uh, bad it is and its effect on the uh, normal person. Look, it's... Yes, look, it's, it's very bad. I think it, it really doesn't help. Um, in an atmosphere of, of, of insecurity, and then people start spreading news. I don't know whether it's the truth or not. In fact, just before I came on air, I actually posted a notice. I, I looked in a complex where somebody also shared a voice note from somebody that uh, professed to be a doctor at one or other hospital. I was saying they shouldn't do this because... Unless, of course, it's, uh, they, they can verify the information or it comes from authentic sources like the police, like uh, uh, the, the Department of Health and so on. So the spreading of fake news is a huge problem. It doesn't help and it actually undermines the efforts. And I think all of us have got a role to play in stopping this. We shouldn't share voice notes and pictures and, and things of information that that is that they can't verify or that's not coming from an authentic source it doesn't help at all and i think it is the message yes it's made provision for no one has been arrested so far as far as i'm aware and i'm sure they wouldn't really want to do that but it, it's a problem and i think we all are trying to address it okay now let's talk about the role of media particularly the sabc during this lockdown period Look, the, the SABC, of course, is the, the national public broadcaster, so we are quite crucial. We're the only media organization in this country that's literally all over the country. We also provide services in all the official languages. And uh, there's, what, four television platforms. There's about 18 public radio stations. And it's quite important that people understand the messages. So the SABC itself is playing a crucial role. The Minister of Communication uh, earlier this week announced that uh, the SABC, for example, will broadcast Easter services on over the Easter weekend, which I think is quite important because on the Christian calendar, the Easter period, uh, Good Friday and so on, it's yeah. extremely important. And now people are being discouraged, are not going to attend the Easter services or if they do on the very strict conditions of you know, the numbers and so on that's going to attend. The SEDC, a, lot of, uh, a number of schools have, well, not a number of schools, all the schools have closed. Yeah. My daughter's school has closed two weeks uh, uh, already, has been closed two weeks already, and they are being taught by the Internet. Now, not all children are in that position. Yeah. Not all children are using iPads and so on as teaching tools in the classrooms. So that is a, a challenge in itself. So the SEDC has got a role to play, and I think the SEDC has acknowledged it. And they are going to have virtual classrooms and disseminate information and support teaching out there. So I think the, the SEBC is, is playing an absolute crucial role to convey verified information and to assist the public with, for example, in, you know, in the religious practices, in the education sphere, and so on. And then, of course, I think the crucial aspect of the role that the SEBC is playing is that the information that we are disseminating is then also in the language that the people 
speak and that they are used to and that they are comfortable with it. Okay. Now, Kenneth, let's talk about the cases and how the reporting is done around the cases. We've got 927 cases confirmed in South Africa and we've got 12 recoveries. And there's sort of a feeling that we are not focusing really on the recoveries so that we talk about the success stories coming out of our healthcare workers. Sure, I didn't get your, your question very clearly, but yes, as you said, there are 927 confirmed cases. So it doesn't mean there's only 927 people with the virus in South Africa. It's these people that's been tested and it's been confirmed positive. So it's, there might be thousands more walking around with the yeah. virus that haven't been tested or people that are being in the process of being tested and its results yeah. are coming out. So I assume by this afternoon, we will see a different picture when new statistics are released. Now that 927 indicates, I think, a 220 or more than 220 cases, uh, an increase on, on Wednesday's yeah. figure. So this is a worrying trend that is happening. The curve is up and it's going up. up. And hopefully, what I think what government is trying to do with this lockdown period is to disrupt the spreading of the virus. And uh, we must remember that uh, the virus doesn't move by itself. The virus is being carried by people. Correct. And the virus moves as people move along. Of and course. if people stay where they are, and if they stay in their homes, then the, the virus, virus won't be spread. And there will be a, a disruption of the spread of virus. This is why this lockdown period is so important. That is why all have to do it. We have to stay at home so that we can disrupt this virus. What it most probably will lead to a flattening down and also a downward curve and that the virus is spreading slower. And hopefully by the end of the three week uh, period, we, we are at a point and we will achieve the results that the government, when they decided to select lockdown, Good. Where, or, you know, the goal that the government has set itself for that we would have achieved it in, in three weeks time. Perfect, but uh, the, the, the second part of the question was, why are we not concentrating on the 12 recoveries so as to spread that sense of hope among the people? Why? The media are not concentrating on why the recoveries. Why are we not concentrating we, yeah, on the, the... The recoveries that are made, there are 12 recoveries, and uh, uh, as the nation is in panic, uh, would it not be okay for us to also document the recoveries which are there so as to instill a, a sense of hope among the people? Look, we, we try, and I think you are absolutely correct, that um, we have to uh, convey the positive side as well. It's still early days, and as I said, there's a lot of anxiety. Maybe we do focus too much on it, and maybe we should focus more on the uh, people that have gone through it. Yeah. I, for example, I've heard on our platforms, uh, the person that was first identified with the virus uh, a few weeks ago, and he spoke about the difficulties that he faced. We've also, there's quite a few South Africans in China, and they are posting regularly to encourage South Africans. For example, we've used those voice notes yeah. and the posts and so on on our platforms to tell people, yes, it's good. But this is a process that we need to go through to isolate the virus. And it's, we are not alone in this and yeah. that people will get through. Yes, and I, I fully agree with you that we should perhaps emphasize the positive side of it because we are in a crisis, and especially in the environment. As I, what I've described, there's a lot of insecurity and a lot of anxiousness. I think that we should perhaps also emphasize the fact that, yes, we are going through this, but people do recover. Well, the people recover, and uh, according to statistics, wildly, worldwide, only I think about 5% of people need serious intervention. But, I, but also, I think that every single death that occurred is, is of concern and is of serious. We wouldn't want to see that happening. Yeah. But the message should actually go out that yes, um, uh, you know, it's a virus, we can overcome it if we do certain things, and if we can prevent it, if we adhere to the prescriptions that are there, and maybe right. speak to people that, that's gone through it and, and got it and recovered from it. All right, thank you so much, Kenneth.
Okay. There you have it, us in conversation with uh, Kenneth Makatiz, is the regional editor at the SABC in South Africa. He was talking to us from Cape Town, talking to us about uh, the mood in uh, the people of South Africa as uh, they officially went into lockdown.